Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our dear listeners. The message that was sent to me reads like this. Hello brother Nashi, how are you? Can you please post my own story as hidden identity? I have come here on your platform and I stand here with a very heavy heart. I have my own burden, a secret that has been consuming me for a very long time. I am a man of God and I had been entrusted with the spiritual well-being of my congregation here in South Africa. But I feel that I have fallen into a deep dark pit that I cannot climb out of my own. I want to confess to you that I am addicted to alcohol and alcohol is now tearing my life apart. When I first came to South Africa, I had dreams of building a strong, a vibrant church that will be the beacon of hope for those that were in need. So I came here to South Africa after I had been transferred. I wanted to bring the light of Christ to the people to offer them a place of refuge in a world that is often cruel and unforgiving. But along the way, I then found myself losing myself and I started to date this other woman who is a Christian but also who is into drinking a lot of alcohol. I came here with my wife, but because of the salary that I am being given, it is not a lot. My wife then said, it is far much better that I return back to Zim because we have our small business there in Zim. And then I started doing some peace jobs here and there until I started to date this woman. I dated her because I know that she is wealthy. So whenever I visit her, she makes me to drink with her. She will be like, it is not nice for a woman to be drinking alcohol whilst the man is just drinking juice. She was a woman who was wealthy, who was helping me out, taking care of me and thereby also taking care of my wife back home. At that time, me and my wife, we were in the process of getting our house built there in Harare. So she was giving me a lot of money. And because of the money that she was giving me, I was able to complete the house that me and my wife were building. And she was the one who bought a car for me. And people do not even know that she was the one who bought this car for me. Even right now, people in church, they don't even know that me and this woman, we are dating each other. So after she had bought this car for me, I then started following whatever that she wanted me to do. That is how I became an alcoholic. With the pressure of trying to provide for my family, I continued drinking. After sleeping with this woman, I'll feel so guilty. I'll, I'll be like, I am a man of God. What am I doing in this woman's home? Why am I sleeping with her? Yet I am a married man. So trying to numb the stress to escape the worries that will keep me at night. At first, I will just drink here and there. But as time went on, I found out that I could not live without drinking alcohol. Right now, what happens to me is that if I can't drink alcohol, then I'll start to shake. The moment that I'll take in some alcohol, then I'll be okay, stress-free. Now I see that I am trapped in a cycle of shame and guilt. I do preach the word of God on Sundays, but during the week, I am like a slave to the bottle. I know that it is very wrong. I know that it is destroying my life and my ministry, but I feel powerless to stop. The more that I drink, the more that I drink, the more that I push away those that care about me, the more that I distance myself because I do not want people to know that I am dating this woman from church as well as taking in a lot of alcohol. I am tired of living this double life, pretending that everything is fine when I know that everything is not fine. When I am standing in front of the church, I know that what I am doing, it is not good at all. I am just lying to everyone in church. And that is why I am confessing now. I need your prayers. I need your support for I cannot do this. I have tried to quit on my own, but I can't. I am dating this wealthy woman, even though I feel like we have to stop. But the money that she gives to me has been helping me out. The salary that I am earning, it is not a lot. It is not that much. It is not, it is not even enough for me to have my wife here in South Africa with all the, at all the times when I need her. So all that I need from your listeners is their prayers. Your prayers, please pray for me. 
pray that God will give me the courage to face my own demons, to give me the strength to resist temptation and wisdom to break this yoke. I believe that with your prayers, God's grace, with God's grace, I can be healed. I can be the pastor, the father to the church that I am meant to be. I am putting my trust in God and in the power of prayer. I know that this journey will not be easy, but I am ready to take the first step. I am asking for your support as I work to rebuild my life and my faith in this very difficult time. What worries me is that last month I ended up stealing money from the church. This woman, she had been out of the country and I was like stuck. I did not have any money at all. So there was some money that had been brought to me by the secretary. It was not a lot. It was just 1,500 rands that I took and I went to a pick and pay liquor store and I used all the money on alcohol and I used all of that money to buy alcohol. I bought some ice blocks and then some tonic water and I went straight home. When I did this, it was on a Friday night. So Friday, I was busy drinking. Then Saturday, the rest of the day, I was drinking my tonic water busy detoxifying myself then sunday i went to church i was not even like really really sober when i arrived at church then the secretary asked me if i had brought the money with me i had to lie to him i lied to him and i said that the money was at home since the money was needed i then spoke with one of our church members who trusted me and i told him that i desperately needed him to borrow me at least two thousand rands and I was going to give him later on. So the man then did an e-wallet for me. Later on, after the church service, I then took the secretary. I was driving in front, and he was following me behind. And I said, let us go home, and I can give you the money. We then went, as we were driving towards my place, I then stopped by this other ATM, and I said, ah, there is no need for us to go to my house. Let's just, just stop by this ATM so that I can do a withdrawal so that I can give you. I then got out of the car and I made the withdrawal and I gave it to him. Then the 500 that was remaining, I then went and I bought more alcohol. The moment that I arrived at home, I then quickly started drinking. So I have not yet even paid off the guy that I am owing his 2000 rands. I am still waiting for this woman because she went to Swaziland and when she will give when she will come back then she will give me more money so that I can pay these people that uh, I am owing I can pay them their money so this is the life that I am living and this is the way that I have been living my life I know that I am just living a lie and each and every time when I am standing in front of the whole congregation I feel so guilty about what I am doing but I feel like I am trapped I can't survive anymore without drinking alcohol what am I supposed to do I have tried to pray about it, but it seems as if prayer is not working at all. I will be following through in the comment section. Dear listeners, right there was a message that was sent to me by one of our dear brother. He's saying that he is a pastor and at the same time he is an alcoholic. Uh, he is asking for us to pray for him. Strange things indeed they do happen in this world.